Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. Now the news in detail. Party Janda Party General Secretary C.T. Ravi, who is also the party's Goa in charge on Monday, claimed that 12 MLAs of the Goa Congress are ready to leave the party and join the BJB. The Goa Congress on Monday said it was seeking disqualification of two of its leaders, Michael Lobo and Dikambar Gamat from the Assembly, over allegations that the two senior functionaries were trying to engineer defections in the, the opposition camp for a switch over to the BJP. This comes as five Goa Congress MLAs who went incommunicado a day before attended the State Assembly proceedings on the first day of the monsoon session on Monday and claimed there, were, there was nothing wrong in the opposition party. On Sunday, out of the total 11 Congress MLAs in the state, five Michael Lobo, Dikambar, Gamad, Ketar Naik, Rajesh, Faldesai and Delayala Lobo had gone incommunicado, a senior party leader earlier said. The Congress subsequently removed Lobo from the post of leader of opposition in the 40-member state assembly. Congress Goa in charge Dinesh Gundu Rao had alleged that Lobo and Gamad were hatching a conspiracy by hop nobbing with the BJP to engineer a split in the Congress. The Goa Congress on Monday said it was seeking disqualification of two of its leaders, Michael Lobo and Dikambar Gamad from the Assembly amid reports of the two senior men engineering a defection in the party for a switch over to the BJP. Goa Pradesh Congress Committee President Amit Badkar said the party is moving a disqualification against the two senior leaders. CLP ka jo, uh, meeting hua, uska jo resolution nikla that uh, to change the CLP leader. So abhi, uh, I have submitted the letter to the Honorable Speaker to remove uh, our earlier CLP leader and our new CLP leader will be finalized by today and uh, we will submit the same. And uh, as said yesterday, I mean, uh, that action, whatever has to be taken. Amit ji, abhi Digambar abhi reaction diya hai ki wo bolta hai ki still ham log Congress ka hi hai. Digambar. Digambar and Michael is also saying that they are still in Congress. Congress. See, I think our in charge, Goa in charge, has given a statement yesterday. I mean, so whatever development happened today, ke hisab se, we have taken a party has taken a stand and uspe hamne kal clarification diye. Fugitive Laker Baron Vijay Malia has been sentenced to four months imprisonment by the Supreme Court in a 2017 contempt case. The apex court, which has been irked over Malia's repeated non-appearance, also imposed a rebase 2000 fine on him after finding him guilty of contempt. The SC has said if the fine is not deposited in time, Malia would face two more months of imprisonment. He did not show any remorse, the court observed while passing its order. The Apex Court was due to announce the punishment for the fugitive businessman today in a 2017 contempt case. Malia was found guilty of contempt for violating court orders by transferring 40 million to his children and was ordered to repay over Rs 6,200 crores in bank loans and was sued for contempt for failing to disclose a 40 million payment from British spirit maker Diageo. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta had told the Supreme Court in February that banks had recovered a total of 18,000 crores from fugitives Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi. Senior Congress leader Sonia Gandhi was summoned again by the Enforcement Directorate for questioning in a money laundering case linked to the National Herald newspaper. Rahul Gandhi, Sonia's son and senior Congress leader, was earlier questioned for five days and has spent over 50 hours at the ED office over five sittings with the investigators questioning him over multiple sessions and recording his statement under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. The probe relates to alleged financial irregularities in the Congress promoted Young Indian Private Limited, which owns the National Herald newspaper. Congress has accused the center of targeting opposition leaders by misusing investigative agencies and has termed the entire action a political vendetta. Putting an end to the dual leadership model in the 
AIADMG, Eta Padike Palani Swami, also known as EPS, was today elevated as the Interim General Secretary of the party. Rival leader O Banir Selvam, or OBS, has been expelled for anti party activities. <laughs> உரிப்பாளர்களுக்கும் <laughs> அனைவருக்கும் தேர்வு செய்யப்பட்டு இங்கே அமர்ந்திருக்கின்ற அத்தனை பேர்களுக்கும் மனமாற உளமாற பாராட்டுகளை இந்த Earlier today, the Madras High Court rejected a plea filed by Banir Selvam seeking to stall the party's general council meeting. The meeting proposed to revive the interim general secretary post and abolish the coordinator as well as joint coordinator post. Ahead of Madras HC's decision, two group of suspected AIADMG workers clashed outside the party headquarters in Chennai. Some persons reportedly sustained injuries. Meanwhile, some men were seen forcing their way into the party office by breaking open the doors. After a vertical split within the party led to the collapse of the MVA government in Maharashtra, Shiv Sena chief Uttav Thakre's parliament unity will be tested when MPs vote to elect the next president of India on July 18. Sources said that faced with a revolt within the party, Uttav is exploring options to avoid further embarrassment. According to sources, Uttav could announce to support NDS Draupadi Murmu for the upcoming presidential elections. Sources said that as many as 16 Sena MBs have demanded from Uttav to declare that party lawmakers will vote for Murmu and not opposition's Yashwan Singh, a BJP rebel. Last week, rebel Sena MLAs and spokesperson of the Shinde faction, Dibak Kesagar, met an appeal to all the parties, including the Sena faction led by Uttav, to support Murmu. Meanwhile, Murmu is scheduled to visit Maharashtra on July 14 as part of her campaign. She will be meeting the BGB MLAs and Sena MLAs who are part of the Sena faction led by Egna Chinde. Sources said that a section of MBs and MLAs who are with Uttav could join the rebels when they meet Murmu on July 14. To avoid further humiliation, Uttav could announce backing Murmu at a meeting with party MPs today. State Minister Dumje Nimna Along has once again grabs the eyeballs of the Twitter Adi after he asked Twitterverse to join singles movement on the occasion of World Population Day. In his video post, he asked netizens to make informed choices or stay single like him. The minister, who is known for his good sense of humor, frequently sent the internet ruffling. Along tweeted, Along tweeted, on the occasion of World Population Day, let us be sensible towards the issues of population growth and inculcate informed choices on childbearing. He added, or stay single like me and together we can contribute towards a sustainable future. Come join the singles movement today. In another, another post on Sunday, Along ruled Twitter yet again when he re reacted to Google's query about his wife. He won the internet with his witty remark sharing a picture of the most Ask question on Google about him. Tim Jenimna along in the post showed all the related queries that pop up in Google when typing his name. Among them were Tim Jenimna along Twitter, Tim Jenimna along age, and Tim Jenimna along viral video. However, what caught his attention was Tim Jenimna along wife. Reacting to the same, the minister attacked Google and wrote, "ILA Google search excites me. I am still looking for her." The response left the netizens chuckling at his quick wit. Recently, also, he had been in the news after his video telling the benefits of having small eyes went viral.
Search operations have entered its 12th day at Nune in Manipur after a massive landslide occurred. Water Resources and Relief and Disaster Management Minister Awang Bo Niumai said that the rescue operations of the victims of Marang Ching Makaum landslide will continue for three more days. The minister reiterated that the rescue operation will continue till all the victims are found. He informed that three more dead bodies have been found and the dead toll mounts to 53 from the landslide that struck a railway construction site at Dubul in Nune district. So, if the village or the family wants to continue for one or two days, we may do so. But one consideration which I think we all have to think a little bit about is also that even if we found the body, uh, it is completely uh, decomposed and we wouldn't be able to recognize the body. For the last 12 days, they are putting all the efforts on this uh, operation and with the uh, armies, the NDRF and SDRF and mostly the village volunteers made a very exhaustive uh, exercise and I hope the victim families are also satisfied with the frantic effort we are putting in our uh, effort to find the body. Say, if we are to continue digging the suspect area, it will go more than one kilometer. Yeah? From river to the, this approach road site. I think it will be difficult to even do the honors. Considering the hardships faced by the officials and volunteers who had been carrying out the rescue and search operation for 12 days continuously, Numai said that a review meeting will be held to discuss for providing additional force in the rescue team. The minister also requested the army, NDRF, SDRF and volunteers for full cooperation unless the missing victims are found. The first ever torch relay of the chest Olympiad reached Kohima today after travelling to different parts of the country. Grandmaster Angid Rajpara handed over the torch to Naglen Chess Association President Neva Krunu at the Heritage Old DC Bungalow in Kohima. To mark the Chess Olympiad relay, a blitz tournament was organised by the Naglen Chess Association in association with the Youth Resource and Sports Department at the Heritage. इंटरनेशनल इवेंट के रूप में अपने जन्मस्थान में फिर एक बार आकर के तो स्टार्ट इस नई प्रदर्शन द टॉर्च शोइ एंड आई पर्टिकुलर हैप्पी टू डू इट हियर Speaking on the program, Minister for Planning and Coordination, Land Revenue and Parliamentary Affairs, Niba Krunu, who is also the president of the Nagaland Chess Association, said that chess was originated from India and today it has made a great impact all over the world as an important game. The minister encouraged the students and chess enthusiasts to participate in the tournament and urged upon the organizers to conduct more tournaments. If, you, if we are to become wiser, it is that the chess, it helps every one of us. Today, in Nagaland, the Nagaland Chess Association, too, have organized the chess tournaments in the district level, especially to the remote area also. And recently, even in Tinsan, the game was organized. Yeah. 
our honorable prime minister also he is a chess player and this time the fide has given opportunity to india to display that it has originated from india for the students it has become very important because their concentration is better they can think deeper and therefore it benefits the youngsters Grandmaster Angid Rajpara, who bought, brought the relay torch, said that Nagas have talented players and he sees potential in them to improve with more tournaments and trainings. Grandmaster Angid Rajpara, I am visiting Nagaland uh, for the first time for the Columbia Torch Relay. And as a part of the program, I played with um, um, uh, talented Naga Nagaland players. And, um, that some of them are playing um, quite good and there is potential uh, for um, them to improve and I hope with um, more tournaments and more training um, they will do well and I am uh, I'm quite happy with the, um, uh, with the hospitality and the, of the Nagaland people and uh, the way they respect um, chess and I am looking forward for more players to improve from this. The 44th edition of the Chess Olympiad has been awarded by the World Chess Federation FIDE to the All India Chess Federation AICF and will be held at Mahapalipuram Daminatu from July 8, 28th to August 10. To mark the historic occasion, the torch relay is being conducted to 75 iconic locations of the country in consultation with the Ministry of Culture across the country and will reach Chennai on the 28th of July 2022. The Olympiad Torch Relay was launched by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi on June 19 in New Delhi and will culminate on 28th of July 2022. The All Naglan Karate Do Association backed 18 medals in the Karate 10 All India Open Karate Championship, which was held on 9th and 10th of July at Maligaon Gohadi Assam. The team backed 7 gold, 7 silver, and 4 bronze medals by participating in pot sparring and kata events. The team was led by technical official Tsatri Ba Sangdam, boys coach Sembai Kashedo Yepto, and girls coach Sambai. Akumienla. As little as seven year olds from Nagaland participated in the event and brought laurels to the state. Chief Minister Anbiran Singh today launched the Chief Minister G. Hakshelki Tengbang, CMHT, and Pratan Mandri Jan Arogya Yojana, BMJAY social media campaign at Hotel Classic Grand Ching Mei Rong today. Addressing the gathering, Chief Minister stressed on the positive change in the health sector under the present government. He said Manipur has improved tremendously in the health sector, as is evident by the successful kidney transplant at JNIMs recently. I am Kashyormi, and the Hidakapa Shyormi, and the Hidakapa Dana, 
The social media campaign which were launched today included official page of CMHT and PMJAY Manipur on all social media platforms, state health agency Manipur's official website, roll out of open BIS, self-registration for PMJAY card, launch of PMJAY comic book, teacher's book, teacher's guide book, PMJAY and CMHT flyers, updated information on CMHT and PMJAY brochures, roll out of PMJAY card generation drive by Zephyr Limited and MedSafe Health Insurance TBA Private Limited. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday unveiled the national emblem cast on the roof of the new parliament building. The emblem is made of bronze and is 6.5 meters in height and took over nine months to cast, said senior Central Public Works Department officials. A senior CEP WD official said the structure weighs 9,500 kg and is 4.4 meters in width. It has been cast at the top of the central foyer of the new parliament building. A supporting structure of steel weighing around 6,500 kg has been constructed to support the emblem. The PM also interacted with the workers Shram GVs who are involved in the work. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri and others were present at the event. <laughs> तो काम करने के लिए उसमें क्या फर्क मकान बनाते हैं और ये बनाते हैं घर का तो काम करते समय क्या फर्क होता है हमें घर मौसम का फर्क है घर वालों को पता है पूछते होंगे तुम क्या कर रहे हो कैसा बन रहा है तो लोग कहते हो यार फोटो तो ले आओ दिखाओ हमको पैसों की जो कोरोना वोरा की दिक्कत नहीं सब नियमों का पालन किया अच्छा वैक्सीनेशन हो गया सब